absolutely thrilled to have an alumni of Central High School who's now at Texas A&M in the core yes. and is the caregiver taker of the school mascot at Texas A&M Reveille. Wow, that is so cool. I have now elevated myself to my son, the Aggie, just being here with you, Cody. <laughs> Wow, and you tell me that this was something back in high school you knew you wanted to do. Yes, I, I knew since about my junior year for sure that I wanted to join the Corps, and I've always kept my eyes on uh, the outfit that takes care of her, and I've always kind of known that I at least want a shot at trying out to be her handler. And you've just finished your sophomore year. I've just finished my freshman year. Okay, yes. and you've had her since April and will keep her one whole year. Yes and she goes everywhere you go and you have to put her before your own needs. Does that sum yes. it up? Yes, that's pretty much the whole gist of it. I have to take her to class, I take her out on dates, uh, to dinner, at restaurants. I take her everywhere that she's allowed to go and if she can't go somewhere that I need to go to, then uh, someone that I trust, highly trust, is I can let them watch her. So, what, at, you were in high school when you thought that this might be a neat thing, and you looked far enough ahead to know there, there is a plan in place at A&M to choose this person. Talk yes. to us. Walk us through that. The process? Yes. Okay. Well, um, first you have to be a member of the Corps of Cadets and of Company E2 within the Corps of Cadets, and it's a Navy Marine outfit. and. Um, from there, you go through your first semester as a freshman, and you kind of earn your place in the core. And then second semester, uh, they begin what's called a tryout process, what they call a tryout process. And they, you have to show interest. You have to go to them and say, you know, I want to try out to be the mascot corporal for Texas A&M. And there's a two-month tryout process, which involves a lot of uh, physical exercises, such as push-ups. We do a lot of push-ups, a lot of running. Uh, uniform inspections. Uh, they make sure you have great grades so that you can you don't lose track of your future and in, in the college. And they it's pretty much a lot of just screening and a lot of evaluating for about two months. And you said about how many young people tried for this? Uh, Ten people tried out for the position that were in my outfit. We had about twenty that they, they try out for other positions and then um, about half of us decide that we want to try out for mascot corporal. And do you think, how much did they watch you during your April and May at A&M or did they, is there not much watching of you, oversight of you by the adults? Do they just trust you totally to take care of her? Well, yes, it's it's a student. The core is a student-run organization, so I had to try out to impress so the sophomore that was taking care of her before me. That was that was who was running the tryouts, and that's who uh, decided that um, I'm going to be the one to take care of her this year. And you will have that same opportunity to choose the person who takes her after you, yes. and you'll be very ticky. Won't you? Yes, I'm going to be very particular and I'm going to make sure that she stays with someone who's going to take great care of her. Now, you told me that she's about four years old. Yes. How long has she been the mascot? She's been the she just finished her second year as mascot. Okay. So, do they already have a puppy in training to take her place down the road? How long will she, is the general rule that one dog stays as the mascot? Well, in the past, it's been an average of about 9 to oh, 11 wow. years oh, that wow. they're a mascot. And they started as soon as they were puppies. Uh, this one's a little different. Uh, she uh, started when she was two years old. She was originally a show dog from Topeka, Kansas. And um, they, they picked her, and they started her off later because, you know, they're, they're putting new rules in place that they should have a few years on them just to kind of, so they know her temperament a little better. And... Uh, after about nine or ten years of age, they retire. They retire them, and uh, she stays with the family that the outfit chooses to uh, take care of her until she passes. 
which is usually a, quite a while after she retires, so she can have a chance of being a dog too. So, uh, someone trains her before she really becomes the mascot? In most cases. Uh, she, this one, she was uh, actually trained um, before, because she was, like I said, she was a show dog, and she, she was trained by a 12 year old girl in Topeka, Kansas. But she's a national champion dog trainer. So. It is was, is that was, the usual pattern to get a dog that's already undergone some pretty sophisticated training? Uh, the ones in the past have, uh, they were puppies. They were, before they were born, most of the time they knew that they were gonna be, this was going to be the mascot. And then they trained them while, b right before they decided to become the official mascot and before they go out on the f football field before games or go to events. So is it fair to say that perhaps some folks raise this breed of dog and hope someday one of their puppies will be chosen as Reveille? Well, <laughs> well I'm sure there's some some people out there that focus on that. Uh, the people in Kansas, uh, their main goal was not, they didn't know about it whenever they were, she was being born, but they heard about it and they decided that A&M needed a great mascot and they offered her which they considered to be their best dog at the time, so they, they're they something really nice for A&M. That is, and look what a great yes. uh, dog. What have been your challenges to taking care of her 24 hours a day, seven days a week? I'm just making sure that she has everything she wants. Uh, she gets a free, she has free reign of my house. She can sleep wherever she wants. She can go outside whenever she wants. I have to be with her, of course, but it's just, you know, keeping an eye out, making sure she's safe, and uh, getting her to events on time and scheduling her events that she goes to. Does the university schedule you to bring her to events where they would want a mascot? Yes, uh, there's, there's a, a lady in charge who, um, she, she must be contacted, and she makes the scheduling, and then she lets me know about it, and it's my job to get her there on time, looking good, and... Uh, there to be there for everyone. Do you have you had surprises as a caregiver to this dog? I haven't been surprised quite yet. Um, I was really surprised when I got her, of course, but uh, I haven't really been caught off guard by anything yet. I'm sure I will <laughs> in the future. Have when you've taken her in public, have has anyone tried to? Uh, agitate her or are most people very respectful of who she is? Everyone is very respectful of who she is. Um, in the college station everyone knows who she is so they're they're highly respectful. And here uh, not everyone, I take her places, not everyone knows who she is but she's never been agitated by anyone or teased or anything. Well I hope not. Um, I, she's absolutely beautiful and as you are just now into just a few months and have some months to go. Will you know what to do with yourself? Have you? What do the other trainers or the other young people who have cared for Reveille? How do they adjust to life after Reveille? Well, um, the ones after it's their job to make sure that the guy that they give the position to is doing what he needs to do, is doing it the right way is taking care of her correctly. So even after I'm, even after I uh, give her to someone else for their responsibility, I'm going to have a role in making sure that she's where she needs to be and doing what she needs to be doing. Do you know how many have preceded you as caretakers of Reveille? You are number what? I'm the 51st. 51st. Yes. Well, has it hit you at any point that this is really a big deal and it's very serious? It hit me pretty much uh, right before I got her. Uh, the last week of tryouts, it was pretty intense, a lot of stuff going on, and then I knew like this is a really big deal to a whole lot of people. Yeah. And so if I get this, I need to make sure I do a good job. What in your life has prepared you for this long-term responsibility? Well, I would just say um, school, I always took like a hard AP load, advanced placement load, time management. Uh, I learned to work hard uh, and 
always just trying to be nice, like a nice guy and someone who's polite and all the time. And I would just say it's just the way I've been raised. <laughs> well, I understand you were class favorite all of your years at Central High. Yes. That's quite unusual and that speaks highly of you. People don't tend to vote for someone like that year after year that uh, has uh, not been good to his fellow man and taken your position, your role as a student, seriously. What do you want to be after, where do you want to go after Texas A&M? Well, after Texas A&M, right now I'm thinking about law school. And um, after law school, you know, become maybe spend a few years as a lawyer and then later on down the road, maybe even a politician or something. I've always had a big interest and I'm majoring in political science, so. And I ask you teasingly if th having this on your resume as the 51st, what do you describe yourself? Caregiver or caretaker? What are you're just the corporal? Well, my official title is mascot corporal, but it's pretty well known as the caretaker of Reveille. Okay, the caretaker. If since that will be on your resume, if you thought that might open some job doors, and you said that you've already heard from, uh, t tell our audience about one person you've already heard from. Yeah. So well, it's a funny story. Actually, I was eating at Johnny Carino's and uh, out on the patio and she was there and there was a big group of people that were kind of having a get together and it was it was some some older folks and they came over and they when I walked in they made a bunch of like they're like hey look it's Reveille and uh, they came over and greeted themselves and it turns out they were a bunch of people who were in my outfit in the and I believe they're the class of 62 and so there were a bunch of um, oldie two guys and uh, one of them is the Supreme Court, he's a Supreme Court Justice for uh, Arkansas. And I kind of told him what I wanted to do in the future. And he said, you know, well, if you ever want an internship, you know, you, you can give me a call and I'm sure I could set you up with something. And I was really blown away by that offer and I, I couldn't believe, because you hear stories all the time about the Aggie Network and mm -hmm. that was definitely the Aggie Network in its finest. Well, but it's deserving because I think uh, even for a Longhorn, <laughs> I would recognize the fact that you are something special yourself to have been chosen for one year. It's one thing if it was a month, but one year is saying a whole lot about you. And uh, what a great honor, not only for you, but for us having a central grad who has been chosen and you're still young yes <laughs> <laughs> you're I asked you I think earlier that I was sort of surprised that a junior or a senior uh, wouldn't be given this responsibility and your answer was that they have so many leadership responsibilities yes. but they're watching you aren't they yes all the time I'm under watch by someone someone around, you know, uh, especially at A&M. Uh, like I said, the former mascot corporals, the guys who gave me the job, they're, they're always making sure I'm doing what I need to be doing, keeping in contact, and when I'm there, they're watching me and make sure I'm doing the right thing. How many now are in the core at Texas A&M? At Texas A&M, I believe there's close to about 2,000. Wow. Uh, we're trying to increase the numbers, but it's either 1,500 or 2,000. I'm not exactly sure on the number. It, it, flunct, it fluctuates, but there's a pretty good number, and we're trying to increase our numbers. Now, do you, after one year, which would have been your hardest year, surely, as yes. a freshman, is the core uh, everything you thought it would be? Yes, it, it, was, it was quite a bit more, actually, than I thought it would be. Uh, you'd kind of get the idea of what you're going to be doing, but a lot of um, the development is based off of you not knowing and not being able to prepare for what's coming. So uh, you can kind of think under the stress of being given this big task so quickly. And that's a big part of the course. So you don't know everything going into it. You just expect to try your hardest and know that it's all for a good leadership development purpose. Wonder what percent, roughly, of those who go through four years of the Corps go on and stay in uh, the military. Do you have any idea? Uh, actually, only about 40 to maybe barely at 50 percent 
decide to contract. Uh, I, I know I'm probably not going to contract. I haven't quite decided yet, but usually about 40% decide they want to contract in the military and the others um, get what's called a leadership certificate on their graduation diploma and uh, from there they it's it's really prestige it's a really prestigious honor and it's it's there on your d diploma telling uh, this person went through the Corps Cadet Leadership Program and it's it's pretty prestigious honor. Have you ever just thought I can't do this anymore? A lot of times during the year, um, you kind of think to yourself briefly. Briefly, yes. I've never been serious about quitting, but yeah. a lot of times during your freshman year, it, it gets really hard, and you're like man, I don't know how much longer I can do this, but a lot of it's perseverance and just learning to push through the hard times and get a good end result. Do you know how many usually drop out during the or after the freshman year? I'm not sure how many drop off after the freshman year. I know a lot drop off during the freshman year, especially at the beginning is whenever a lot of people decide it's not for them. But it's, it's a pretty good number at first, but we always keep a lot, and we've kept it going all these years. So. All these years. Yes. <laughs> well, did anything in your family or in your schooling prepare you to take orders to the degree that you have to in the Corps? Um, I've always, you know, done what I've been told and followed the rules and never broken the law or anything, but not to this degree. Uh, it's very structured and everything you do you must do it exactly as exactly how they want it so it's it's pretty good preparation for the future i'd say absolutely well i do tease a lot about aggies but i'm so impressed with what they how they help mold young people and for you to take that on and this large responsibility because most young people right at the 20s are more taking care of themselves, I, I think. And so now you have uh, shown that you not only can take care of yourself, keep your grades up, but take care of someone who's totally dependent on you. Yes. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Do you know what you want to major in? You said you're a pre-law? I'm political science major okay. right now. Okay. And I, right now my focus is kind of on law school right now that it could change at any time but absolutely it could and might yes <laughs> yeah I hear that quite frequently that well, you probably might and it's decide. okay it's okay yes. well I know your family has to be so proud of you and uh, we're proud of you <laughs> thank you thank you very much and I hope that this is one of the best experiences of your life to have had this beautiful animal um, that is treasured by so many current and former Aggies. Yes. And they're depending on you. Do yes. you feel it? I've, I've, I've felt it. Uh, I, we, during the end of the season, we uh, had one last march through Kyle Field, and it wasn't even a football game, and the stands were packed full of core parents watching their kids march. And I really kind of felt the pressure because as you walk by, you can hear everyone cheering, kids or hanging over the wall trying to get a good look at Reveille. And, and the noise, none of that bothers her? No, no, um, I don't believe so. I haven't, been, I haven't experienced a football game yet, but I've never heard of her having any problems at the games. I've never heard her barking. Now, end. let's talk about that. We talked a little bit before this uh, filming about some of the lore of yes. Reveille, and you told me about that if, it, of course, she goes with you to class. Yes. And if she barks during class, the professor is supposed to interpret that, that they haven't kept the class in a, lively enough and that they're to dismiss class. Yes. But unfortunately, this Reveille <laughs> is so laid back, she doesn't reward students with that getting out of class early. No. <laughs> but her predecessor did. Yes, her predecessor, she was, she was a little more vocal. She barked in class quite frequently, and so the professors kind of, I guess, made a loophole and said, you know, we're going to keep class running, but if you want to leave, you're allowed to leave. So in class, uh, this one, she, she's always like this, pretty much laid back and just taking a nap. <laughs>
Well, <clears throat> this is good, probably, uh, instead of nervous. Yes. Uh, of, uh, nervous. Do you... What are you look? I know you've got to be looking forward to the football games because that's yes, a big. Much. Do you go to away games as well? We go to a few okay. each year. I'm not going to go to all of them, but uh, this year I believe I'm going to Baylor and I'm going to Austin okay. for the game against Texas. Okay. Wow. Well, it'll be a chapter in your life yes. that will very few people get that the opportunity. Yes, I'm very excited and very, very, very grateful. Well, what are you doing this summer? This summer, uh, we're, we're just staying at my house, just relaxing. She, I mean, it's her break, too. She has a pretty busy schedule at A&M. And uh, occasionally, I'm going to go back and forth to College Station uh, to a few events and let some of the upcoming freshmen get to see her. Son. Of course. Wow. Well, we hope that this is more than even you've dreamed it to be. Yes, it's been fantastic. Okay. And we'll look forward to hearing after football season if it was just magnificent. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for coming to see us. Thank you. And this is a lucky dog to have you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs>